G'day, Mark Woods is my name. I'm the house sound mixer at the Theatre Royal in Castlemaine, Central Victoria, uh, a long running venue. I've been mixing bands for about 45 years. Started off with the Aussie punk bands in the late 70s uh, and did my middle of the road years with men at work uh, around the world. I did Tina Turner's live sound all around the world uh, during the 80s. Lived in uh, Los Angeles, came back to Australia mainly to do recording in the uh, early 1990s. A uh, lot of recording, alt, alternate indie, silly Melbourne bands. Uh, this is Serious Mum being my favourite of the ones from that time. And I did their live sound for five years as well. Um, bands officially died in some ways in 1995 in Australia. The poker machines were introduced, uh, dance music had pretty much taken over from the live bands and the scene changed. Uh, I guess I moved to the country and, uh, well, I've sort of been here at the Theatre Royal for the last 20 years. Uh, and it's a nice venue. It's on the map. The current owners are doing really well and it's just a classic kind of four or five hundred people room. That's packed. It's got a nice big stage. Uh, very old school. A reflection on me. We are one of the last uh, analogue venues. A big Soundcraft MH3. Another one on stage. I realise that we are against the times in that, but, um, well, it started off because we were cheap. You can get really good old analogue discs uh, for a low amount of money these days. Uh, it's become a little bit of an audiophile thing, like we're known for the, the sound in the venue now. Um, we often have engineers come in. We had an engineer in last night who reckoned he had not used an analogue disc who wanted some instruction. So that made me feel nice and old uh, and old school. Today we're here with the Midas Heritage D, which we're trying out uh, as part of the review. This would be a typical venue that could use a desk like this. Um, if we upgrade, I don't know when, when we plan to upgrade. I'm finding with the analog gear generally that it's dying. Like when it dies is probably the play, time to replace it. Um, so something like this is exactly the sort of desk that the theatre would consider um, some time. Your meat and potatoes bands really just need, I mean, the main thing they need is a good solid sound and uh, ease of operation of the console because you're not going to do a hell of a lot to them. You know, they'll need, their, they can have some dynamic processing, you can have your normal EQ and things, but it's mainly just good, ch good channels, good microphones um, down the channel in a night, you know, good strong balance and tough sounds. Um, but you get bands like, well, Kurt Vile and the Violators, I think. That was a band that once would have been done on 12 channels, but when they're in here, there was over 40 channels. Uh, everyone's on ears. They did have a bunch of keyboards and things, as well as just guitar, bass, drums. But they needed, like, you know, they had to have the, the full console here, the, uh, another one down on the stage, everyone on ears, the operators on ears as well. Um, that sort of more modern show, I call it, uh, has evolved partly out of this type of technology. Um, they've, the technology's evolved, so they are using it um, for that sort of performance. I've had this in here for a couple of weeks now. Uh, we've been using it, uh, we've been showing people and uh, I've had it set up on stage and so far it's very easy to use once you've got it set up. There is certainly a learning curve. Um, I've used most of the digital desks but still haven't really obtained expertise on any of them because I use them casually or in a walk-in situation, have them for a few days. Um, it is different with the digital desks once you get to know them, once you set up your own workflow. Um, it's very different to walking in on one the first time. But they do need to cater for both. Um, people tour and they get so inside the desks they spend half a show staring at the screen looking at things they can do. But you also get people who walk in who've never used one before or haven't used that brand and they need to feel comfortable um, that they can use it. Part of that's a system tech thing but I have found the system techs expect you to know the console. Um, that's kind of always been the case with analogue as well, and yet they are more obvious because everything's on the surface. So these do have a job to do to be set up so the way you like them. Like there is a certain thing you need to do. You can't just turn it on and work it. You really do need to 
Well, firstly, get it patched and just get it configured so that you can use it, learn how to save the shows. Um, the internet connection is a very important part of this console. That's a fairly new thing. Um, it connects to the cloud and it backs up to the cloud, so your show files are there. Uh, very handy function, um, but again, it needs to be set up. Once you've got it set up, then you know your files are there. In theory, you could go anywhere in the world and download your show file into the console rather than have to have a USB stick. There's a lot of opportunity for sort of future software or firmware development uh, with the online connection. In terms of getting the desk going, it probably only applies to the actual owner of the system or the, the main user. But you do need to go in and set it up. But again, there's still a few Midas things you need to know. Uh, I've had a user very familiar with Midas boards in no problem, he was all over it. I've had people not familiar with them who needed to think it through. Patching, patching I really like, uh, often an intimidating part of the digital consoles. It's the thing that people, well, patching, uh, effect sends, there's a few of them that, that typically are difficult or need to be thought through. Uh, patching's obviously a big one as well, uh, but this is really intuitive to drive. You sort of got to, this side, you select this going to whatever you've got selected on that side. Uh, the options are all nice and easy to sort of, to get to. You can access your, um, can access your stage boxes easily from here and patch them as well. And they're just, uh, you know, you sort of just turn them on or unpatch them. It's good. If you make a mess, you can hit unpatch. You have to unlock it before it locks. So it's, it's kind of quite a secure system, that one. There is deeper patching where you put channels to channels, channels to groups. Again, the routines are simple and it really is, it's just, you know, it's nicely laid out. First impression of the desk is the uh, surface is beautiful. Right? Like it really is just an ideal size. The screen being here is correct. The screen is terrific. It's a multi-touch screen. You can do pinch movements. You can do all sorts of things uh, on it. Um, You've got views all over the place. Um, very handy up here. You've always got home and you've got a home button down here, which gives you a very handy overview. You've got a channel view. Uh, gives you things relevant to the channel. At any time, you can select, yes, you've got to watch glasses, pens, microphones, anything left on these desks. Um, could just fly off at any moment. You've got different views instantly of channels, just ch just your input levels, all the way up to 144 inputs, uh, just at the touch of a button, and your view of the channel. So you've got your channel view and all the things you may want to get to, um, but you can just flip to other ones very, very easily. There's, of course, different ways of doing it. This desk can be driven from the screen. The, um, the faders will come up on the screen as well and really it can be effectively mixed on the screen if you want to. I do not like using iPads or any of those things. I like a real fader, but these are pretty good. They're actually easy to drive. Uh, they're, they're mirrored down here, of course, and not too bad at all. You can also do more than one at a time. Like, there's stuff like that. This is where the multi-touch screen is, is pretty good. Um, I have a feeling that the more you use the desk, the more you would do this for simple adjustments. Um, the whole thing can be quite screen centric and you can do so much stuff on the screen. The multi-touch stuff you can do, all of that sort of thing. Very good, very handy, uh, very handy to use. So it's possible to just drive the whole thing off here in a few faders if you, if you wanted to, but that would be doing a disservice to this side of the screen. And I know I spent a fair bit of time and didn't get over to that section until quite late in the piece. And yet when you're using it in a show, this is beautiful. These are really nice to touch. They're at hand. They just feel good. And so during the show, this side of the desk comes into play more. Uh, the channel view is beauty. You get an overall console view handy, not so much a show thing, but gives you an idea. You've got various layers. Uh, it'll give you your inputs. Again, you can just sort of select everything you want. You've got your pop groups. Um, well, pop groups, they're like subgroups, I guess. Um, you can just put whatever you want into them. 
and similar to VCAs in that sense. We've got our VCAs down here, and again, everything's just at the touch of a button. It gives you all the channels you want. Mancino's interesting, and I think this is a unique, uh, unique to Midas one. It can affect lots of channels at once. Very handy, you can select what you want. You can then make changes to those channels uh, collectively. Very handy, uh, should you wish to. Handy for setting shows up as well. Uh, automation. Yes, well, comprehensive automation. Uh, we'll flip through the scenes, uh, as you wish. Not something I use a great deal of myself, but handy if you, if you do want it. This is a big one, it's the navigation view, and you really give it an idea of how the console's laid out broadly. Different ways of looking at things. At the moment, in this HD24 mode, stripes the 24, all at hand, the 24 channels. Really good overview and kind of a normal sort of analogy way of looking at things. <laughs> no layers. Um, layers aren't always bad, but sometimes it's nice to just be straight. You've got uh, the Pro Series mode you can go to, and again, you've got your input channels, but only on the first 16. It defaults to my six fallback sends uh, over here. Probably handy as well, just for, oh, well, if you're going to make an adjustment to the foldback. Um, to use the desk, you can, oh, you can scroll through inputs, you can scroll through outputs, VCAs, tags, which I'll mention in a moment. They're fun. Uh, big feature of this desk is groups, uh, pop groups, which you can just populate with anything. Um, again, this is up to the user. There's quite a lot of them, 24. They're very easy to populate, the pop groups. You can just drag channels into them, name them, whatever you want. And it then just gives you the, uh, get my vocals. If vocals group, they just pop up, all your vocal channels are there at hand. And you get drums. Um, in this case, I've made uh, an extra group for the drums, guitars or bass. I mean, normal stuff, but just very good at hand there. And then you sort of can get your fallback with these modes. You can get your whole 24 channels. If you get into trouble or get confused, why well, get rid of these? You just hit one of those and it just puts whatever that is on the desk. So you've always got that. Just if you do confuse yourself, and I do with these, um, you can get back to where you were fairly quickly. Uh, monitor mode down here, if you're running it as a monitor console. Uh, and a VCA mix mode, which is interesting. It uh, just brings up all your VCAs. The console is, it is quite easy to mix on VCAs. Uh, it's sort of designed to do that, uh, set up around it. Another excellent feature of this desk, and I don't know how many other ones I've seen it on, uh, is the channel tags navigation. Uh, it's another way of navigating, but this one, by some sort of different criterion. Um, you've got, for instance, all the channels with the compressor on will come up. I like the all the channels that are patched comes up in case you're just wondering if you've missed patched something or it's not patched. Um, all the channels that have the compressor on, for instance, give you an overview of what you're sending to the compressors. Um, some of these are sort of not perhaps essential functions, they're more just handy things, but a really good use of it is the clip channels. Any channel that's gone into clipping will come up on the console. You can then quickly just change the gain. You could even uh, change the gain of them collectively, uh, if you like. Just another way of getting to channels quickly, but one that's quite satisfying and, uh, and quite fun. It's quite a fun way to look at the channels. Mute groups. 12 mute groups there, uh, which can be assigned to wherever you want them or you find them to be handy. Uh, a lot of effort's gone into different talk groups and the shout set up on, this, uh, on the console. Now, it's very flexible. And again, this is a reflection of the, uh, the in-ear monitors, I think. You just really need comprehensive communication uh, abilities, um, which you can get right into the shout routing and things uh, on this console. Um, naming. Naming's pretty awesome actually on this. Uh, if you get a channel, you can just start with a fresh channel. Well, I'll start with a really fresh one. And you get, well, if you've ever tried this on the, um, on the company's entry level model, uh, you may have noticed it's extremely frustrating to the point of um, 
rather than go through nudge buttons letter at a time, I just put a bit of tape on and, te and you know, the, the text the colour. This is nice. It's very clear and easy. You can name it. I'll call it the, uh, I'll call it synth. And, uh, you know, you then just choose a colour. And it's named the channel, given a colour. That's, you know, pretty good. It's a simple thing, but uh, in the middle of a show that you sort of need to be able to do that quickly. The idea of having to go through one letter at a time to, <laughs> is not good. Then we go to the effects rack. Uh, and again, comprehensive to say the least. Um, this thing is packed with effects. We've got a bunch of really good ones here. Well, I mean, they're all quite good quality, but because of Midas' family connections, there's uh, the TC Electronics high-end reverbs in here, uh, Clark Technic stuff. It just got lots of nice brand names and different reverbs to try. Another feature of this console is the time alignment. The processing aligns delays throughout all processes so that it all comes out in the same phase at the end. Uh, I believe that's not the case with a lot of uh, the earlier consoles. And it's just part of the continuing efforts to improve the sound quality over time. Um, and I applaud them for doing it.